It doesn't matter where you're coming from, all that really matters is where you're going. We greatly overestimate what we can do in one year, but we greatly underestimate what we can do in five years. There's a phenomenon called the goldfish phenomena, and what it basically says is that the goldfish is not aware that it's in water because it's so surrounded by water, it's part of its environment. And sometimes you can be in a place like this that is so dynamic and it offers so many opportunities for financial success and not even be aware of it. You compare it with your day-to-day -day activities and your local competition and so on, but the rest of the world out there is really struggling, and what we have here is really good. Imagine that you have a magic wand, and a magic wand is a way of thinking. In magic wand thinking, you imagine you could wave a magic wand and you could have your situation any way you wanted. And when you do that, you'll find the number one reason why we don't move ahead is because we have fears and doubts, we have limitations, we don't have enough money, I didn't get enough education, I don't know enough people, the competition is too hard, it's too hot outside, blah, 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 okay? And so when you wave a magic wand, you say, imagine that you have no limitations and you could wave a magic wand and you could have anything that you wanted in life. So one of the things we do when we do strategic planning with corporations, and I suggest that you do this, we say, imagine you could make wave a magic wand and create what is called a five-year fantasy. You could project forward five years and five years from now, your life would be perfect in every way. If your life was perfect in every way five years from now, how would it be different from today? And one of the things that we teach in more extended courses is the four areas. First of all, your business, your career, your income. Second of all, your family and relationships. Third of all, your health. And fourth of all, your financial condition overall. How much do you have accumulated? How much do you have coming in monthly from your investments? Those are the four critical areas of life. And about 99% of your happiness or unhappiness will be because of success or failure in one of those four areas. And I cannot tell you how important this is because there's a rule that says that whatever you see, you will be. And if you have a clear picture of what you would like your future company to look like, and then you come back to the present and you say, all right, if that's where I want to be in five years, what would I have to do starting today to begin to create that perfect company? What would be the first step? And here's the most amazing thing is you can always see the first step. You'd always know that you, that you should start doing more of this or start doing less of that or start doing something new, or stop doing something that you're already doing. But you can always see the first step. And the most wonderful thing is that when you take the first step, is you get three benefits. The first benefit is that you get feedback, which enables you to self-correct. And all of life is a process of experimenting and feedback, and changing and correcting. It's all of life. Second of all, is you get ideas. There's something about acting that actually triggers your creativity. It makes you smarter. It activates more uh, of your brain. Sitting there passively doesn't do anything. But taking action actually sort of lights up your brain like a Christmas tree. And the third air, third factor is that taking action gives you confidence. Your self-confidence goes up. Is the more actions you take in the direction of your goals, the more confidence you have, the more creative you are, the more energy you have, the happier you are. You feel like you're in control of your life. You feel powerful. The top 20% of people in every society and business are proactive. They're constantly taking action. The bottom 80% are passive is they're waiting for someone else to come and tell them what to do. And the people in the top 10% are the ones who enjoy all the rewards. They're the ones that make all the money. They're the ones that make all the progress. Maybe not in the short term, but in the long term. Some people take the first step, and then they take the second step, and they take the third step, and they keep getting feedback and ideas, and they fail, and they fall down, and they pick themselves up, but they're intensely action-oriented. If there's one thing about top people like yourself is they're action-oriented. How do I know that you're action-oriented? It's because you're here. You had to go through a lot of time and trouble and inconvenience to be here today, which means that you're action-oriented people. Now, Peter Drucker, the management guru, had this wonderful observation. I love Drucker. He said, we greatly overestimate what we can do in one year, but we greatly underestimate what we can do in five years. So this brings us back, and I'm looping back again, to the other fantasy that we do. Again, it's a five-year fantasy or even shorter, is you ask yourself if you had a magic wand and you could wave this magic wand and overnight you could become excellent at any one skill in your business. You could become world-class and top maybe 1% of people in your field. If you could develop any skill within 24 hours or take a magic pill and wake up in the next morning, and be absolutely excellent at any one skill, what one skill would help you the most to be more successful in your business? And you know that most people are only one skill away from doubling their income? They're only one skill away. And so what I have found is that almost everybody knows the answer to that question. 
If you don't know the answer to that question, you cannot move ahead. If you cannot, do not know the answer to that question and you cannot focus on that question, then you're stuck in place. Because the only way that we move ahead is by getting better at the most important things that we do. And so if we're not continually improving in the most important areas, and if you're going to improve, improve in the area that's going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. It's going to give you the biggest impact on your financial life in business. There may be a different answer in health, there may be a different answer in sports, but in business, what would be the one skill that would help you the most? If you could be overnight absolutely excellent, or your company could be absolutely excellent in any one skill, what would it be? They've discovered in 25 years of research at the University of Florida, they've looked at people who started at the bottom and got to the top and became the heads of Fortune 500, heads of Fortune 1000 corporations. And they went all the way back to their early performance appraisals and comments by their supervisors. And they found that they had all settled on the same strategy. And the same strategy was to identify the one skill that would help them the most at this stage of their career and then concentrate single-mindedly on learning that skill. And they were serious about this. They didn't just you know, read a book or an article. They made a plan, like a lesson plan. And they, they asked, what are the best books to read in this area? What are the best programs, audio programs to listen to? What are the best courses to attend? And they developed a course of study and they worked for weeks and months and even a year or more to develop that skill. And once they had developed that skill and people started to tell them, hey, you're pretty good in that area, that was their sign that they had mastered the skill. And then they would ask their boss or ask their coworkers to look at the top people around them or the most successful business people around them and they would identify the next skill. And what we find is that all of life is like climbing a ladder and each step on the ladder is mastering a new skill. And what these top people do, and this is one of the greatest breakthroughs in business success I've ever seen in an entire life of studying the subject, is what they do is they get better one skill at a time. They don't try to get better at 10 skills because that just exhausts you and you see no progress and you soon quit. So what they would do is focus like a laser beam on a single skill until they had mastered it. But here's the most amazing thing. When you are focusing on the development or acquisition of a particular skill, your whole mind is in improvement mode. So what happens is you automatically start to get better at everything else without even thinking about it. You're just more conscious and aware of things that you can do to be better in other areas by focusing on a single skill. They call this, Pears Anderson, who did all this work, calls it deliberate practice. And it is the key to great success, deliberately practicing one skill at a time. Now, once you have learned this skill, which you will, nothing, only one person in the world that can stop you from mastering a skill. Who is that? It's always yourself. It's a lack of self-discipline, lack of personal management, lack of control, and so on. I don't have enough time. I'm so busy. I'm tired all the time. Wah, wah, wah. Shut up. Shut up. So what it takes, and they found that it takes about two hours a day, five days a week of deliberate practice or focus on a new skill to master the skill. Once you have mastered the skill, then what do you do? Well, it's obvious you ask the question again. Now, what one skill, if I was absolutely excellent at it, would help me the most to achieve my financial or business goals? What's the one skill? I uh, was at a private meeting with the uh, head of one of the biggest companies in the world, and that's terrible because the name escapes me for a second, but I had read a book that he had written 10 years before, and it was based on over 30 years of experience, and he'd run two Fortune 500 companies. He said what they discovered was that your weakest important skill sets the height of your income. Your weakest important skill. In every field, there's five to seven vital skills. Your weakest skill in this little group of skills sets the height of your income and your success. And so often it's one skill that's holding us back more than anything else. Once you learn a skill, another thing happens, is a nickel drops in your brain and you realize, I can learn new skills. Damn, I could learn any skill. I could learn languages, I could learn any skill. Wow, and suddenly the dam breaks in your mind and all the hesitation and lack of confidence and, and lack of uh, certainty that you had, suddenly you realize I can learn anything I need to learn. And it gives you a tremendous sense of power. So from then on, your whole life becomes a do-it-to-yourself project. Your whole life becomes a process of learning one skill at a time, climbing the ladder of success. Every rung on the ladder is higher income, greater influence, greater power in your profession. Getting better in your field is one of the most important things you can do. The most important work you do is thinking, is thinking well about yourself and your work. In fact, every mistake that you've ever made has been a result of poor thinking or not thinking at all. 
You all know what I'm talking about. Every, every success you ever had has usually been the result of really good thinking prior to taking action. Now the reason why thinking is so important is that the quality of your thinking determines the quality of your decisions. And it's an interesting observation is that you are where you are and what you are today as a result of the total of all your choices and decisions up to this moment. In every part of your life, from the time you became an adult or before, you've made choices and decisions. The cumulative result is where you are today. Your income, your health, your happiness, your business, everything else. But my great rule, which is quoted all the time, is that it doesn't matter where you're coming from, all that really matters is where you're going. And you can, your, where you're going is only limited by your imagination. So what you do is you say, forget the past. In the past, I could have done things differently, but I can't change the past, but I can change the future completely by what I do now. So the quality of your thinking determines the quality of your choices and decisions. The quality of your choices and decisions determines the quality of your actions, and the quality of your actions determines the quality of your results. Results are the most important single word, is what results are expected of you? What results do you need to get in order to achieve the goals that you set for yourself? And the ability to be absolutely crystal clear about the results that are necessary is the mark of the leader. And it's absolutely amazing if you ask this question, you'll find that 80% of your time at work is spent on doing things that have nothing to do with results. They are just busy things. There are conversations and reading the paper and making phone calls and going for lunch and so on. And if you're really strict with yourself, uh, you'll find that much of what we do contributes nothing to the results that are most important to our success. And successful people are those who are very disciplined. Does this, is, is this the very best use of my time? Now the reason that, that thinking is so important, uh, aside from the results, is because of the word consequences. I began studying time management and designing programs and books and I'm now one of the, probably the best, the top time management author in the world in books in 42 languages. And what I found when I was studying time management is this concept of consequences, which was one of those life-changing concepts. What it said was that something is important to the degree to which it has big potential consequences. Something is unimportant to the degree to which it has low or no consequences. And what is the difference between top people and average people? Top people do more and more things that have big potential consequences. Not guaranteed consequences, but potential consequences. Average people spend most of their time doing things that have low or no consequences at all. In other words, if they did them all day long, it wouldn't make any difference. But top people realize there's two or three things they can do. Learning a critical skill, making a critical decision, taking an important action. There's certain things they can do that have enormous potential consequences. I have had experiences where meeting one person at the right time in my career has led to millions of dollars of revenue. And, and the consequences, I look back and I say, if I had not taken those steps and been assertive and aggressive and traveled and, and done all those things to establish that relationship, the difference would have been phenomenal. So the, it's a great, great question for you to ask. What are the consequences of what you're doing? And of all things, thinking has the greatest consequence. The quality of your thinking has the greatest consequences of all. Warren Buffett was at a dinner party with Bill Gates and Bill Gates Sr. And they were talking together because Bill Gates and, and Warren Buffett are good friends, have been for a long time. And Bill Gates' father, very, very successful businessman in Seattle. They were at a dinner party and the three of them were talking, chatting away, and somebody came up to them and asked them a question. And he said, excuse me, gentlemen, these are two of the five richest men in the world. Both started with nothing, by the way, started at zero. Warren Buffett started with $2,000 that he earned by delivering newspapers when he was 14, 15, and 16, and is now his company is worth $360 billion, and his company's made $24 billion last year. Anyway, so they came up to him and they said, gentlemen, excuse me for interrupting you, but we've just been noticing you talking, and we had a question for you. What would you say is the most important skill for success? And they all three turned to him and said the same words simultaneously. Focus. Focus is the most important requirement for success. With focus you can do anything and without focus you can do nothing. Focus is the key to success. But all three said it simultaneously without asking each other. Focus. And it's really interesting because I began teaching this concept back in the year 2000. I began a, a coaching and mentoring program that I called Focal Point. Focal Point Coaching. You know the focal point is where if you hold a magnifying glass in a certain way it'll have a focal point that burns and you can burn through things. Well, so I call it focal point. 
And I taught thousands of business owners and have still all over the world in multiple languages how they can look at each part of their business and focus on the one thing in each area that they can do right now that will have the greatest positive impact. Everything else they do has a lesser impact or no impact. And your ability to select the one thing that can have the greatest impact on your life at any time and focus, focus is the key to your success. That's why I'm so concerned about the, I call it the attraction of distraction. It is so disturbing because it guarantees failure in life. You actually become addicted to distraction and you can't stop it. You're just like a dope addict. You've got to have your distraction. And if you have, if you, if you are addicted to distraction, you can't focus. And if you can't focus, you haven't got a chance against someone who can. And so therefore, it's a, I, I'm hitting this a little bit hard, but I want you to think about it because most people slip into this attraction of distraction and they, we're, not, we're not even aware of it. Many of you are a little bit surprised when I talk about it because you hadn't even really thought about it. You hadn't even really thought about how much time you spend during the day distracted. And the answer is about 80%. And the rest of the time, by the end of the day, you're too tired to do anything worthwhile to do the really important things that have big potential consequences. So your earning ability is your most important quality and your earning ability means developing one skill at a time that can help you the most to get the most important results that determine your success and your happiness. Now here's the great payoff is they say that happiness is the progressive realization of a worthy goal or ideal. When you actually feel yourself moving progressively toward achieving something that's important to you, you feel happy and your brain releases endorphins. Now endorphins are different from dopamines, but endorphins are nature's happy drug. They make you happy. Endorphins make you more creative. They make you calmer. They make you more personable. They make you more focused and they just, and they give you more energy. So people who have high levels of endorphins are very healthy. They sleep well, they're very personable, they're creative all the time, and you can actually develop a positive addiction to endorphins. And the way you do that is you work on things that are moving you toward your goals on a regular basis. And so every day you feel this forward progress, this forward momentum. Human beings are designed so that we're only happy when we feel effective, when we feel that we are accomplishing something, when we feel productive, when we feel valuable. There's the, the, one of the challenges we have with welfare in any country that has it, but especially in the U.S., is people can very quickly get addicted to welfare, but by come, becoming addicted to welfare and free money, they become angry, they develop feelings of inferiority, they become alcoholic, they, all the joy in life is gone when they're not doing something productive, when they're not contributing. The, the rule is that your self-esteem and self-confidence are largely determined by the degree to which you feel you are make, putting more in than you're getting back out. And it's a very simple concept, is you feel that you're actually contributing more than you're getting. If you're at a job and you feel that you're not contributing as much as they're paying you, you feel really angry. It, has a, it seems to have a, a, a deep negative effect on your personality. But when you feel that you're doing a great job, that you're really making a difference or a contribution, you feel wonderful about yourself. And the only way that you can achieve that is by having clear goals and then focus.